and they and create a chain in your lab so that these problems get solved. So let me repeat what I'm saying: that uh, we are trying that each one of you in a group of uh, right, make me make a host. Yes. So uh, first is that uh, an unmet need either from your native region or an aspirational district or the problem that some of you have already selected. I remember a case where three colleagues from NCL and Rurki and one more lab had joined together, but they all had interest in that problem. Similarly, I got a mail from a colleague who has interested in the example that we shared of the corporator modification of the corporator. So all those needs, if you really have identified a problem, then stay there. I will not like you to change. But if you have not identified, then identify a problem, an unmet need, an underutilized resource, <clears throat> an abundant or abundant resource. That is the second point, which you could pick up and build a value chain around. I gave example of uh, sugar factoria, the molasses waste or bagas or many other such problems. A waste from large number of processing industries is thrown around, thrown around. And if you can convert that into value-added product, that would be wonderful. The third thing that I said is that if you can solve, if you find a solution anywhere in the world or your lab, by all means identify and then we will work with you and help you to deploy it. That means you will translate a concept or a technology available into a practice in the region where you come from, in the region where you are interested in. And if it is not, then suggest a way out, a pathway through which this solution could be developed. So these are the three things. Uh, third part has two parts, A and B. Third A is that if solution is available, just describe it and how it can be used. And if not, then how would you like to, this problem to be solved? And you can co-opt people even from other labs, non-CSR labs also, in your group if you wish to. It's entirely, our purpose is to get problems solved. Nothing will come in the way, so therefore all rules are flexible. You can make a group of two, three, uh, in exceptional cases, four, and uh, choose your problem. And we will give you time today, if possible, to write a synopsis so that I know that you are under a lot of pressure. But if you can take some time off and uh, you can't hear me? Can't you hear me? We can hear you, sir. So, Rupa Prata, please join again. Maybe you have a problem in your... Ah, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry if you missed something, but I have repeated the point. So, uh, so Namika, I just showed, the, as you have heard, the three. Yes, sir. The form and the. The question that you had yes. designed. I've shared that. So and this is only the initial. Uh, these are only the initial thoughts, uh, because you will be required to write a full-fledged paper, and these are only indicators. So we want to bring out a book com compiling your contributions. Length of the paper is your choice. Imagine if 150 or 100 more or little less contributions come together from all of you addressing an unmet need each. Each group will address an unmet need. And these groups will be maybe interlab as we saw in the earlier classes, or even interinstitutional, you could have person from BTBT lab or ICR lab or TFR or IC or wherever, or engineering college. Doesn't matter, choose, you, you have to choose your own partners and bring in as many people as you wish, who you think can help. And that would be wonderful. So that at least in the coming batches would have a, a benchmark, a baseline to begin with. So they will only do, they will take their ideas forward. And hopefully in two or three years, these problems with which our country has lived so long, maybe millennia in some cases, will get solved. So you can also take up problems of meta level. For example, 
Some of you may be interested in the chemistry, mineral chemistry, or soil mineral properties, or isolating the mineral uh, pathways in food or uh, food chain. So let's say if somebody wants to do a project on linking the minerals in the soil with the minerals in the crop, say food, with the minerals in, let's say, our body. And you want to review, I have done a small, I mean, about 30 uh, professionals formed a group in about 2009-10 where we look at soil health, crop health, animal health, and human health. And we got doctors, 15 doctors together. We got soil scientists, we got livestock scientists, we got crop scientists, we got pathologists, and we, we, we did a baseline about, we took two villages where chronic diseases were very high and two where chronic diseases were very low, and tried to see whether through the minerals, as Linus Pauling had, Linus Pauling had told us, that they are very important, they play a very important role in human health. And we thought that we will try and see how uh, we could trace. And interestingly enough, it was a pilot study, but we found that at least copper was indicating uh, some possibility of discriminating the two populations. The high chronic disease or the low chronic disease. Now, this could be a meta review, but this will certainly bring our attention, our attention of the policymakers, attention of the food scientists, attention of the nutrition people that look in the soils which are rich in mineral, use the food grown there as functional food. So let me give you an example. I don't know if I mentioned it before. Pardon me if I have, leave beer with me for repetition. That uh, I'll come to Janavi, I'll answer your question. Janavi. So, uh, for example, there is a, the, in a case, I think I mentioned, but I, let me repeat this example. Uh, in Africa, there was a study done as to why some villages have a high arthritis and why some have low arthritis. Did I mention this example? Anybody remembers this? Sometimes I forget. Anybody? Yes, yes? I know. I have? <laughs> Sorry. No, no, Professor, I'm just kidding. It's like, I remember all right, you know that, but other zones <laughs> then uh, Dell, uh, did I share? Just no, 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 okay. not in this class. So let me remind, let me repeat it, even if I share. So the idea of the question, it was I gave a lecture at World Food Congress at CFTRI. Dr. Prakash was the director at the time. And uh, I said that uh, the scientists wanted to know why arthritis, which is almost of epidemic proportion now, almost every house has someone who has pain in the joint. So why is what more in some places, some villages and less in other villages? So the scientists found out that boron was the mineral which was important and the local varieties of maize could mobilize four times more boron than the hybrid maize. So people who consumed local varieties of maize as in Uttarakhand and many other places had much less incidence of arthritis. Of course, people in hill areas who consume maize in a big way, to climb the mountains every now and then. If they had pain, how would they do that? How would their life go on? They can't pull on because they have to climb the mountains every day. So if we take the maize grown in boron rich soil and give it as a functional food to arthritic patient, that might be a good way, a bioavailable way, affordable way of supplying boron to them. Similarly, copper, similarly, other minerals, which we are deficient in. Uh, uh, and that helped. Uh, for example, uh, selenium, I remember a study, we, a, 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 uh, we published an a interesting study by Bob Osko, who had gone to Mongolia and found that in livestock, at least for premature abortion, it might work in human beings. I'm not so sure, but some of you might figure out. When there is a premature uh, abortion uh, or abortion, preterm abortion of a child, of a fetus, uh, they found that one of the reasons was la lack of selenium. And where did they get it from? So they mixed wheat bran, condensed milk, and onion leaves. Apparently, onion leaves had higher selenium in the region, and that made a, they made a lick for the livestock. So selenium has also been identified as very important. Now, if there is a problem and we need that problem to be solved and food of selenium rich soil could be used for this purpose. So anyway, this is just a long, I detoured a bit, 
to give you example that you can choose problems of the meta level also where you will do a review of a, a problem which affects a bigger domain than just one district or one region so i uh, your choice is yours and when you say team of five people well my suggestion is three to four is ideal because you know what i've been doing this for years four or five decades i've been teaching generally what happens in a larger group some people then are not contributing much so if you want to five no problem because then you can have five dimensions you can write in the synopsis that each one of us will look after one dimension and one of and then we will put it together so in those cases we will make exception make a case for it make a case for it then we will definitely consider but or ideally you can I'm, actually translate a solution yeah ideally what we are saying is uh, at least three from our group you can take one or two students from other labs other part of the country other uh, systems other domains other departments dbt icr atomic energy uh, you know whichever earth sciences from anywhere you want so there are problem there's a problem that you have identified and for that you need to uh, bring a peer person from other discipline by all means bring it uh, ecological indicators for example if somebody finds that there is a knowledge system in your native region where people have very good knowledge of forecast rain or whatever temperature variations and you want to do a review of that and look at how far some of these practices are valid today and how can we do a good research program to validate or update them well that would be an interesting problem too but ideally we will prefer that you take a problem which some of which i'll share i if you remember i mentioned about iron rich water in himaji assam so if some of you take problem of developing a filter for that and filter for different special kinds of problem if there's a group that you form which will pull together all the water filter technologies in the country and around and and target them for different districts where these problems are and mind you the regions which are economically backward are also the regions where water problems are much more intense because that's the reason why some of the regions i mean these are the emigrating region where from people migrate out so those regions where people migrate out they go from those regions to other regions for work those are economically depressed regions where people come in or immigrate emigrate and immigrate immigrate means they come to so for example western up labor will come from other parts punjab labor will come from bihar jharkhand wherever bengal so then those are relatively speaking developed region obviously because they attract labor so question is if we want to help the regions where from out migration is taking place you remember uh you remember that uh, during the pandemic early phase one of the wave so many people moved from one place to another on foot thousands of kilometers there was a girl who cycled 45 kilometers to bring her sick father and there were many such examples very painful you some of you might still remember those scenes now naturally we have to work out some solutions for those regions so that migration becomes lesser that would be nice now priti uh if you are working on science policy surely you can look up gaps in the science policy i'll give you one example if you look up for instance a need for large scale trial of a technology which has gone through minimum approvals so it's a self it's a technology that you have developed sometimes even a startup has been set up but you have only developed one two or five prototypes you want to take go to the market of course you will wait for the investment but investment will come when you have audits audits will come when you show robustness robustness requires large scale testing we don't have a policy today to provide funds for large scale user trial of a technology as we have in agriculture sector in agriculture sector if a new variety is developed we do on farm trials or and or demonstrations as the case may be and that create demand for the seed and then a company may be set up to sell the seed and farmers will buy that but in industrial sector in non farm sector we haven't made such a policy so i see sir labs do not have as yet a network of sites industrial clusters where they will go and show i mean i, I mentioned this example i'm repeating that iip developed a very good pan open pan for khansari unit which is energy efficient 30% less energy how many units they could set up three or four i, I mean dr anjan ray and his team did marvelous work 
I'm aware personally. But if they had resources for putting it together in maybe 50 villages, 50 uh, units or 50 towns where Kansari units are working, the chances of its adoption would have increased. So you blame sometimes scientists in uh, industrial labs like CSIR or DPTN that look, your things are lying on the shelf and moving. But where is the where is the mechanism? Where is the process? Where is the funding? Except in Aroma Mission and a few other areas where special funding was given precisely for this purpose, the results have been spectacular. You know that IHPT, some of you might be there from IHPT, some of you may be there from CIMAP and BRI. You know that remarkable results have been achieved when funds were given for larger scale trial and demonstration. But where these are not available, what do scientists do? So Priti, work on such a problem where gap is existing in a policy and try to solve it. And that will help everybody else, of course, who are dying to do so. So that is fine. That is fine. From the dry lab, one can definitely do that. Similarly, if somebody from, let's say, astronomy or somebody is from pure physics uh, and would say, sir, what can we do? Well, you can look at the problems of minerals. You can look at the problem of structure of the soil. You can look at even teaching of physics for that matter in school. And how do we create good lessons? You know, IIT Kanpur made a lab where students could do, with the help of online connection experiments in a virtual lab. I mean, virtual lab connected to a physical lab. But it was all IIT connected. Now, can we correct, he create a physics lab in NPL? I met the new director recently with, with, doctors, with, the, with the, in a, uh, Dr. Shekhar's room and just a few days back, wonderful scientist and a human being. And I'm sure he will allow people or will encourage people if you were to do, create a virtual physics lab for our students and teachers to access and do experiments, which they cannot aspire ever to do because of, uh, how many schools in our country can access those kind of instruments? So you can even think of educational endeavors, but try to convert that into a reality. At least do a pilot, a small experiment. At least create a small lab, if not too big. And then it will expand eventually. So find a solution for a problem. Find a solution for a problem. So now we will come back to our day's discussion and I will take you on a walk, virtual walk with me uh, on learning from common people and nature. Any questions so far before I proceed? Any question? Anybody has any question, any clarification? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, how long will it, what will be the timeline for the Timeline, I would this. say Ashwini is there. Ashwini, may, I think we should give them at least a month or month and a half. Uh, your term ends in August. This one, this current term ends in which month? August or September? August, I think. In July, sir. From July. 6th or 7th of August, a uh, new session starts. Sir. New session starts. 7th of August. So maybe can we do it by 7th of August? Is it possible? Or 10th of August, something like that? Will that be enough time? Yes, sir. It would be almost a month or so. Uh -huh. so yes, sir. yeah, yeah. For I synopsis. Yes. So yes, what sir. I suggest is they can make the presentations before that. So, so that we, we can give them days. a huh. we have, so we have kept three days. Yes. When, when, which are the dates? Can you can we can we let me see. Let me check. Which are the dates we decided? Uh, can you send in the outline? I'm also checking. It's it's July 27th, 29th, and 30th. Ah, so I would suggest July 27th, 29th, and 30th, we would have a presentation of interim work. Is, is that all right? That's okay. So that at least there's some pressure we create on ourselves. Presentation would they be also in, get group, some in group, feedback. in group, from it will be in group as we discussed just now. Group could be of two to three people, ideally. In exceptional cases, if you want to involve people from other labs, uh, try to make interdisciplinary groups, groups from across the labs, uh, within the CSIR network, but also outside CSIR. If you want to bring somebody in, you are most welcome to do that. Not a problem, uh, child. So that's entirely up to you. That's entirely up to you. So after and, the uh, presentation, you get a week to refine your thoughts and yeah, get yeah, the feedback. Yeah. And we will also encourage uh, uh, people 
giving feedback to each other a peer learning and, and if you want to bring some community member in your presentation whose problem or who who can give the context of the problem that will be wonderful so the user of your solution if you want to bring a user of your solution potential user of your solution to the class by all means do that that makes us accountable that makes us responsible and that makes us uh, i mean connect with the community which is going to use our solution so that brings a great joy i mean the smile on the face of that person who is going to be benefited by your solution would be wonderful incentive for all of us but certainly for the team which may have worked hard to find this solution is that all right any other question we can do 515th august also vishal not a problem for final not a problem you can all whatever you decide i mean no harm in ex uh, extending it up to 15th august let us celebrate independence day with at least 100 and odd papers which each one of you will in a group write but I, I let me mention one thing that in case one of you or two of you or one of you want to do it alone also we will not come in the way so group is not obligatory but it is a suggestion but if some of you want to do alone you are fine not a problem so uh, uh, Anika, after the, the presentation you will have to have, have to submit a paper the idea is to bring out a book so uh, pre, uh, you will be uh, you will have and, and we will get the ha huh, and we will get these papers reviewed and if yeah, you so that, if if, if yeah. you can uh, maybe uh, try or experiment with a couple of solutions or one solution that will be of course the cherry on the cake that's so right. that's uh, yeah so both and the third is a desirable thing if it is happens and we all will be happy my presentation is in the class but we might invite a few colleagues either some former dg or i will see i'll try and talk to samir manchari i'll talk to girish i'll talk to some other people i'll talk to dr mashelkar so if they can come for uh, even a few of the presentations to listen according to the subject wise we'll arrange it so that they can comment on their domain i i mean none of them will say no to me so and of course i might go as shaker also to spend some time with you so it will be very nice if we get some other fellows from the academies to listen to you uh, and give you feedback so be ready during those 3 days uh, to extend the session uh half an hour or an hour every day because we won't be able to finish in 2 hours each but that's the direction we are moving in and it is very important that we discuss it today because we don't have too much time to discuss now only uh two classes or no one uh, one class is left is it or two two 9th and uh 9th and uh, one more yeah so so therefore any other question yes not only general uh prasanjit they are thinking of a book i am editing a series with the uh, springer i'll discuss with them whether this can go in that series on frugal innovations uh most likely we will do that i and dr mushelkar are co-editing the series and this volume will be edited by uh, both of us but we will also include some other people if we need to but you will be the authors of your paper of course and these will be reviewed is that all clear so you will have to you should write a synopsis timing should be around 5 minutes and 2 minutes for q and k q and yes so 7 7 minutes so 700 minutes we will need in amita 3 days if there are 100 and uh, uh, so 3 maybe less so let's say 3 200 minutes every day so then we can do that we, yeah. we, with half an hour extra we will make it 700 yeah. minutes yeah. that's right that's right you're right that's why we kept 3 days yeah but it will be fun and if you want to invite anybody else in from your lab to attend those presentations by all means invite them we have a capacity of getting having 1000 people in this zoom connection so don't worry about that you are welcome to invite you want to invite your family feel free to invite them if they are, anybody you want to invite just give them a connection and they will join but uh, just make sure that they don't they keep muted themselves there is no other restriction how can i know my group yes that's an interesting question so i would leave it to you to find out you will form your own group first you choose the problem start seeking partners some of you have done it at last the two session before i remember three of you formed a group will they speak out the one who formed the group can you speak out the one who made the group last time 
there was one group which had emerged all and one or few other groups had emerged for one of the unmet need but uh, this is something where you will have to write to each other we have given we have circulated the list of everybody to everybody and i'm going to do we have uh, they, do they know the email of everybody they are in the group but uh, we will share the yeah so so the, we have already list in which their lab and their background is mentioned isn't it the unmet need list that we had in the beginning yes sir we have ah, so so uh, then we so please share that listen, slides uh, i would suggest since there's a 5 minute presentation don't make more than 5 slides uh, puja three. what do you find confusing that you'll have to choose your partners no no let puja speak out puja please tell us what is confusing to just speak out unmute yourself prachi we can search any problem we have to see uh no no you can choose any problem from ideally from the place you come from hello you, yeah uh, uh, prachi you can collect you can select the problem that you already have identified let's say from the innovation that's fine hello sir or you can select a problem from ideally from the region that you know best Hello, Because sir. Then you can yes. you can do justice. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Sir, मुझे ये पूछना है जैसे आज आपने जो स्लो स्नो क्लीनर वाला दिया है कुछ कार्बोरेटर करके कुछ दिया है वो क्या वो क्या चीज है सर वो assignment है वो क्या करना है वो assignment है वो assignment थी और हम उसके लिए discussion arrange करेंगे आपके जो भी group innovator से दोबारा मिलना चाहते हैं we will arrange that discussion. ओके सर उसमें हमें स्लाइड बना के देनी है क्या उससे मतलब स्लाइड में आपको अगर आपके पास कोई सजेशन है उसको इम्प्रूव करने का जैसे किसी ने कहा कि मुझे याद है वो कार्पेटर वाले में आई एम फॉर इन नेम बट वन ऑफ यू हैड सेंट मेल टू मी सर आई एम आल्सो इंटरेस्टेड बिकॉज़ आई एम डूइंग पीएचडी इन द सब्जेक्ट फ्रॉम सीएफएमआरआई और वेरेवर फ्रॉम दुर्गापुर और और सर ये जो आपने बोला है जो 15 अगस्त को 10 टू 15 अगस्त के बीच में जो प्रेजेंटेशन होगा 5 मिनट स्लाइड उसमें हम कोई भी रिसर्च एरिया मतलब कोई भी सोसाइटल रिलेटेड वर्क को सेलेक्ट करके प्रेजेंटेशन दे सकते हैं प्राची माय सजेशन इज कि आप ऐसी प्रॉब्लम मैं हिंदी में बोलता हूं इंग्लिश में बोलता हूं बिकॉज़ सम ऑफ द सम ऑफ द कोलीग्स फ्रॉम साउथ इंडिया मे नॉट अंडरस्टैंड और यू कैन सेलेक्ट आप ऐसी कोई प्रॉब्लम ले लीजिए जो आप जिसके बारे में आप बहुत अच्छी तरह समझती हैं समाज की प्रॉब्लम सोसाइटी की प्रॉब्लम ओके यू आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट प्रॉब्लम ऑफ द दैट्स ए कोई एल्युमिनियम प्लांट है और उसमें से कुछ काम उसकी कोई एनर्जी बॉयलर की एफिशिएंसी इंप्रूव करनी है वो तो आप सारी जिंदगी करेंगे करेंगे उसके लिए हमें हां नहीं करना है काम हम कर रहे हैं जो अनमेट नीड है सोसाइटी की कम्युनिटीज की वर्कर्स की अह उस तरह की नीड जैसे मैंने आपको बताया ज्ञाति अवार्ड हमने दिया था पीएचडी स्टूडेंट थे जिसका जिस मेगा जरम का नाम ढूंढ लेना है ज्ञाति पर ज्ञाति डॉट एक वीडियो डॉट इन पर उसने देखा वर्कर जब पेस्टिसाइड स्प्रे करते हैं तो वो अपना गियर नहीं पहनते सेफ्टी गियर नहीं पहनते yes. तो उसने एक लोशन बनाया जिसको अगर आप डर्मल लोशन जिसको आप अगर अपने खाल पे लगा लेंगे तो पेस्टिसाइड का असर नहीं होगा आपके ऊपर ना देट वॉज अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल सोल्यूशन यू गॉट ऑफकोर्स फिफ्टीन लैक अवॉर्ड बट देट वॉज अ वंडरफुल सोल्यूशन बिकॉज यू सॉल्विंग प्रॉब्लम ऑफ वर्कर्स जिसके बारे में हम ज्यादा सोचते भी नहीं है और वर्कर सबसे ज्यादा काम करते हैं खेतों में वर्कर फैक्ट्री में काम करते हैं और उनकी सेफ्टी के लिए उनकी बेटर लाइफ के लिए हम लोग नहीं ज्यादा काम करते दैट वाज अ गुड एग्जांपल दैट दैट काइंड ऑफ एन एग्जांपल वुड बी वेरी नाइस वेयर यू आर सॉल्विंग प्रॉब्लम ऑफ द अंडर क्लास द डिसएडवांटेज पीपल द डिसएडवांटेज रीजन द डिसएडवांटेज सेक्टर जो जो लोग जिनकी प्रॉब्लम्स को हमने ज्यादा ध्यान नहीं दिया है ओके 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 इज दैट ऑल राइट इज इट क्लियर नाउ ललिता आर यू क्लियर Yes, yes, sir. Clear. Yes, now, Anjali, I'll explain in English. So, what I'm saying is that you can take a problem which affects the disadvantaged sections of our society. What All is right. the age? All right, Chavi, Chavi, I'm explaining. Right, I'm explaining once again. Sir, and sir, as far as CSR professor. 800 is concerned, Ashuni, are you there online today? I will ask professor, you to answer that question. Professor, professor, yes. I wanted to know what is this CSR 800? Yes, there is, is a there is a course that they do. So, that so they but do. it is not. uh in this course right no 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 i'll tell you what it is in this course labs are supposed to send the students to identify some need now my own feeling is that you should have no has no problem in getting credit for csr 800 course as far as i see i will talk about it to dr sangwan and check with him because if you are working on a problem then that is the purpose of csr 800 so why should there be problem but i will check up and get back to you this but uh, keeping that aside for a minute keeping that aside
Shall we let me summarize what I'm saying? I've repeated, but I'll repeat one, one, one more time. A problem or an abundant or abundant, abundant resource in your region, that is also a problem, that there is so much of a resource available and we are not using it properly or not at all using it. So then the jobs that can be generated, the waste that can be removed, the bioresource that can be efficiently utilized is not happening. So if you take problem from your region, native region, or a aspirational district, or any disadvantaged region, the choice is yours. The region that you know well, the region that you know well, so that you can do some ground to thing. If you take problem from academically, from somewhere without a route, without a connection to the community, then you may not be able to ask somebody uh, or interview somebody or get little more detail about it, various dimension of the problem. So idea, the purpose of connecting you to the root, grassroots, is so that you can get more information about the problem. Is it clear? Is there any doubt about this problem? How do we select problem? Is there any question on that? Is there any confusion on that? Anybody, please? Don't, I don't mind. We will explain four times, five times. Doesn't matter. Because this is the most critical part. If it's not clear, then how would you write a paper? Radipta, is it all right? Pankaj is okay? Anjali, is it clear? Thank you. All right. Sir, I have one doubt. Yeah, please, Sir, please. is the, uh, like... There are two different things. One is the individual Google form which you've sent. We have to fill it. That is our in individual problem which we, we have identified. That is correct, one correct. thing. Correct. And then as the group of three, we need to uh, right. uh, settle a, down a, on a, one. Yeah. Where problem. you will where you will no. do a literature um, review. Where you will do a literature review, you will also which all the three of presentation. Yes. On which we, all the three of sentence and okay, so these are two different things. Okay, they are two different things. The reason sir, why I, we I, have come, I think, sir, I think if because they have they had an assignment to start with, right? The unmet need. Huh. I think if we can just modify this form and let them do it in group. And Amika, what happened was that that need was some in many cases was very general. Huh. So yeah, it yeah. Was, hmm. So I will. I hope you will agree that at that time. The definition of unmet need was too general. And some of you had included, of course, the lab waste problem, which is an unmet need, but which was a lab problem, not the community problem. So I did share that with our with the DG also. And uh, the library issue, has it um, been resolved or is it being resolved in some labs now that you can get offline access to the library? Has it been has any progress taken place? It was supposed to be discussed in the director's meeting last Monday. Yeah, uh, Kavya Rasan, please, thank you. Kindly find out with Ashwini about the CSR 800 credits because I think this is a very fair point that when this is the work that they have to do, could we not get them credit for that? Only thing is the structure is slightly different. In uh, CSR 800 course, they have to work with the faculty of their lab, but I'm sure the faculty of the lab will not mind uh, uh, taking your work in this regard co-opted for that purpose. I hope it will be, I hope it will work out. I, Keshav, I don't expect any problem. You see, after all, why are we doing it? We are doing it because we want to connect our heart and soul to an unmet need of our society. Assume for a minute that the only credit you get is the smile on the face of the people for whom you have done this work. Would that be not worth it? Tell so me. I think so. They can get their uh, clarification from Ashwini about the CSR 800 thing. And if Keshav, you... Keshav, I cannot answer your question just now, but I'm telling you that most likely, most likely, uh, the your team, your lab, your colleagues might agree to let you work on the same issue a little more deeper. That is my feeling. But I will get clarification with Dr. Sangwan and with Ashwini in due course and we'll get back to you. But for the time time. being, we can assume that this is separate. Keshav, your point is absolutely valid that you are in the final year and your time is very, very precious. So my suggestion is that you co-opt in your group some of the younger students, junior students, or at least, no, junior is not, not the right word, younger students who perhaps will support and carry a little more burden and you can guide them 
uh, in this process. So I, this is up to you, entirely up to you. And plus, uh, a publication always helps. Yes, yes. So I'm saying that you are really doing something which has never been done before, in my view, because uh, the way CSR 800 was done was very different from what we are trying to do. So uh, I will not comment on that, but I'm only saying that we are trying to concretize our... Puja, you wanted to say something? Yes, Devalina? Again, I'm, I mean, uh, this is a certainly a part of societal program, Devalina, but uh, the entire structure and role of this in the scheme of things, I will get it clarified and come back to you next class. But assume for a minute that we are doing it as a standalone. And if you can contribute to this process, I think no matter what credit formally or institutionally you get, Certainly the credit that you get in having understood a problem that society has, remained, has suffered from for a long time and in solution of which you have contributed, at least if you define the problem better in a scientific language, then also that is a contribution because then the solution will become easier. You, you will tell us these are the five ways in which we can solve this problem and this is the way I would like, uh, we would like to suggest we should begin. Which end of the problem we should pick up to solve it is a half the success. You have not only defined the problem, but you also have defined the end from which we solve the problem. And some of the pathway that might be followed is possible. I'm, I'm not expecting that in a month's time, all of you will succeed in solving the problem. But if you can succeed in giving a pathway for solution, why not? Then some other students might follow it up and maybe we'll put it on a blog so that everybody in the country can take it forward if they wish to. So it will be an open content. Again, okay, partial, sir. thank you so much. Partial, my request is use this opportunity to connect with the problem of grassroots. Even if you have done CSR 800, my suggestion is that little find little time, form a group, guide the group, maybe with some other students, and contribute your knowledge, your insight, your skills in pursuing this. Of course, professionally, you get a publication in Springer Nature series, which I'm editing, co-editing with Dr. Mishalkar. And personally, or let us say in a group, you get the satisfaction of having cracked a problem to the level that it can become solvable. Many times problems are not solved because nobody has defined them properly. And that's a problem. So I would suggest that uh, Kindly consider this during the three days of presentation. Present your solution, form your group, and I'm sure. Yes, Ishani. Sir, I had this doubt. Uh, an email was sent to us. The Google link was there. So I wanted to know that the problem that we have to solve the uh, uh, that in the Google uh, link that you had sent. So will that be at the individually or the group that no, we form? No, 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 no. Well. Once you put the individual problem, obviously you will, it will help you to form groups, but essentially you are going to work in the group. So what we are saying is, out okay. of 300 people, we are expecting 100, like the group is three. Clear? Because some problem will not be selected okay. by so anybody. Professor, what I suggest is that they don't do anything about the form right now. We will circulate a fresh form to both the things and then they do it so that there is no confusion. All right. Okay. That's fine. So let's say that you start discussion among yourself about the problem that you want to select and then take that problem. This form was only to facilitate your thinking. It could be resource-based problem. It could be uh, technology, I mean, mechanical problem. It could be electronic problem. It could be mineral problem. It could be chemistry problem. It could be biology problem. It could be linked to any, any aspect of the problem. For example, if some of you wanted to fork out the science of naval route of drug delivery, which we discussed earlier, which were from the grandmothers used nutmeg uh, to solve, to release the uh, flatulence among the infants. That would be great. There's not a single paper on that subject. Write a paper. One of some of you who are interested in that field and who understand physiology and who understand uh, drug delivery and who understand this, 
can take up that problem. That's the problem of our society. And if you do that, maybe more, more mothers, young mothers, uh, parents will start believing in it because now they will have a scientific basis of it. Otherwise, they think it is number jumbo. They think that it's just a traditional knowledge without any scientific basis. So you select the problem. Is that okay? Is that all clear now? Huh? Any other doubt, please? Uh, I hope that we can proceed further. Uh, let's continue. Vijay Kumar, yes, please go ahead. Vijay Kumar, please go ahead. Vijay Kumar, did you have a question? Your hand is raised. All right. Maybe my sir, sir, I am Sanjeev. Sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Vijay Kumar is speaking. Uh, yeah, this is a, a more of like a clarification. Uh, earlier, we have a group uh, like carburetor, uh, seven, five people. So we have to do assignment, uh, including seven, five, seven people and submit in return. That Everything. is, that is, that was for one session where you were, had been introduced to some grassroots innovators. And if you can give some suggestion for improvement of that, you're most welcome. And your okay. suggestions will help that person. So all the four or five people we have to write together and one single yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, yeah. so far we are not able to uh, connect that person. I mean that. So we will uh, uh, just send a mail to Dr. Namika or Mega. We will arrange that. We will facilitate the meeting with the innovator at your convenience. You tell us which dates and time slots are convenient to you all and we'll arrange that. Okay. Second question is that now this is another assignment that uh, yes. now a new group we are forming and uh, we have to find a uh, problem and uh, submit a uh, solution to that so in a group of four. So solution. Uh, if solution is not available, a pathway to solve the problem. Is that clear? Okay. So that will be a single paper, including four. This is a paper three, with three papers. Three uh, yeah, three authors of yeah, three authors. One paper length you can decide. It can be short. It can be medium size. That is entirely up to you. There is no. I will not insist on it on that. Uh, but, paper's length is no reflection on its merit. But my first about, paper. Yeah, yeah, but what about that field experiment? Experiment because the uh, experiment may not be able to conduct. I can understand. I we, when we so, fully understand that that may be a difficulty. So if you give a pathway for solving that problem, I think that would be a good contribution. Okay, so more more of like a, is a text kind of thing, text and some of the figure. Correct. 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 You will define the problem very well. You will review the literature and also the patents if there are any on that subject. And then you will suggest that this is the way uh, we can proceed to solve this problem. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Rupa Prata, you have already mentioned, so I suppose, Baljit, is it clear to you the point? That I was just mentioning that those of you who work in drug delivery, if supposing you took a problem of finding science underlying the application of nutmeg uh, paste on the navel, for relieving the flatulence or gas in the stomach, in the infant's stomach, infant's belly. That would be a good paper because we do not have as yet a good scientific explanation. It works very well that you know because all of you or many of you have gone through that treatment or your niece, nephews have gone through. But we have not given the scientific explanation to our communities, our people. And then in future, for all that you know, the drug delivery scientists will start paying attention to naval route, which they have not done till date. There is no modern drug which is delivered to this. So why not? So that's the point. So you're opening a new path of drug delivery research, and your paper might be the first one which will have to be cited for by anybody who will work on naval as a drug delivery. So you will be pioneer in that sense. That's all I'm saying. Yes, yes, you can present this project, Keshav, anywhere you want, in uh, CSR 800, wherever you want to present. You are free to use it in any colloquium, in any conference, in any meeting. No restriction to anybody for sharing this work with anybody. Is that all right? Keshav, is it clear? Keshav, does it resolve the problem? You're Yes, thank you. So we proceed. Uh, Sanjeev, you have a question? Uh, yes, yes. So Go basically, ahead. what I understand from your uh, today's lecture that uh, three of us, that, that means three of the uh, students, 
uh, will make a, a kind of review, right? Yes. And uh, it may solve a particular uh, problem, or uh, uh, we, we can we can uh, gather the problem uh, that we can express the problem uh, in the scientific community that we have this problem and this uh, these are the probable solution we have we can proceed with this uh, solution so basically it's a, a review article Correct. and it's a review article, article uh, with a definition of the problem in more detail because okay uh, it is possible that the definition that you give of the problem let's say let us take the case of iron rich water in dhimaji now okay. The way you define that problem, maybe some of you come from Assam, I found some Gogoi and some other students, you can talk yes, to them, yes. somebody from Dimaji even better, talk to them, if you can't, I will connect you to somebody because we have walked in that region, talk to them, understand uh, what kind of problems, what kind of health problems they have and so on, and then uh, see uh, how can this problem be resolved, or yes. is that resource, can, uh, sometimes you might say, sir, but this iron, the crops of that region, the rice of that region might be iron rich and we can also use it, the rice for as a functional food. That would be wonderful. So you can look at the problem okay. as an opportunity and problem as a problem, health problem. Both dimensions can be covered in the same paper on okay. iron rich water of the Imaji. Okay, sir. Got it. Thank you, sir. Good. good, good, good. Thank you. So let's proceed now. Sir, a doubt. Hai. Ah, bolo, bachi, bolo, bolo. Uh, Abhijay, sir, yeah, see, now in the local uh, institute, we already formed a group yeah. for the societal and uh, we are just waiting for the local coordinator approval. Uh, we have notified the problem uh -huh. and we are waiting for the local coordinator uh, approval for that. So now this, uh, this uh, what local problem we are identified right? and now the assignment we are giving, these are two separate things or can be clubbed No, together. well, I, I would, I, my suggestion is I will leave this freedom to you. I mean, I'll give this discussion to you. I, why should we increase your workload? Only thing is the method or the process that you are falling into different submissions might be slightly different. That's all. But it's some to and I, I will leave it to you. We leave it to you. All right. Okay. No, sir. Whether that problem can be clubbed together, what? I'm well, share with us, and we'll give you feedback. Okay. When you present, I mean, we might either reduce the scope of the problem because it may be too big, or if it's too narrow, we might suggest that you add a one or two other dimensions. That's all we will. I mean, we meaning all of us will comment to each other. Okay, fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Avinash, I will mention to you. Send you. Send me a mail, and I will reply to you. Uh, very good that you picked up that problem. That people who make liquor in tribal people who make liquor distill only at only one uh, compound or one uh, one product out of the mahua flower or whatever that they take, which is called which is alcohol. But if we have a fractional distillation apparatus, then they can get the whole library of compounds and their income can increase multifold, manifold, uh, and they will start selling in ml instead of selling in liters, and they will also not do damage to their health because they will get more valuable outputs from the, the from the herbal products that they use. Uh, for uh, their well-being uh, and they may also get connected to the industry. So certainly I will write to you and mention it. All right. And it's okay. And maybe. So let's proceed. Uh, good. We have, uh, it's good that you ask so many questions because it is, it is utmost necessary that whatever we do, we do with a purpose and that purpose not be compromised because our thoughts were not clear. Uh, Tirupuntaka, can you not hear me? Can you leave and join again, Tirupuntaka? Because there may be a problem at your end. Others are able to hear me, isn't it? Can you put on the chat somebody can put yes, yes, yes. Avnash is saying yes. So Tirupuntaka, my suggestion is kindly rejoin and maybe it will improve. Mahmoud Takir also can hear. Harshuda can also hear. So please, uh, please, uh, our friend who is not able to hear, kindly exit and join again. Then maybe it will improve. Or change the location of your phone or your laptop in the room where you are sitting. Sometimes that also helps in improving the connectivity. And sometimes that, because direction affects the wind, it affects the window. So kindly do that. My mute, my mic is not muted. 
Uh, let me see. No, my mic is not muted. Others are able to hear me. So kindly check, kindly check at your end. Are many people having this problem of not be able to hear me? No, sir. No. It's clear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'll continue with this. What we have decided for today, and let's see how do we go forward. So one of the argument that I'm making is a continuation of the point we made in the last before class that great institutions, cultures, civilizations start declining when they become complacent. They develop deep inertia. Uh, what Clifford Greets called as involution. Just as you have evolution, there is an involution. Almost like a downward spiral. And we become, we start criticizing each other too much. We start condemning each other's ideas too much. We don't encourage innovations. We don't, we always blame our past. So for example, some people say, because we had a colonial rule, therefore India did not develop. How long can we complain about that? 70 years have passed. We can't be blaming colonial rulers for all our problems. There were many other countries which had colonial rule. And despite uh, colonial rule, many of them have come out and done so good. So surely we don't live in the past, we live in the future and we live in the present. So it is very important that we create turbulence, we disturb the technological, institutional, education, cultural, creativity and innovation, inertia and the system so that the ideas simmer up, they come up on the surface and show the atra that we pursue helps us in doing that. So we have been looking at hot spots of innovations. We find that in almost wherever you go, there are people who are not patient with inertia, who want to do something different. Even in your lab, you might find some students are very impatient with the problem. Some people will complain, Are bhai ye ho rahe, but something is not happening. Some others will go and fix it up. So there are always doers and there are always uh, people who would uh, nag about it, who will, who will complain about it. And those who are doers may do some mistakes sometimes. Thank you. And we will be therefore paying attention to them who are the word. So we go, I'll give you an example. And let me let me share this example. So one of the exercises we do in our Shodhyatra, we take this match stick, we burn it. As you can see, I'm burning it, extinguished it. Then we will ask, and I'm going to ask you now, if I've not asked before, okay, change the design of the stick. You remember what the answer is? So that it works more. The designer of this stick, the big companies who have manufactured this stick didn't realize that we can't waste it because it's made of wood. And wood is not so surplus. It's a scarce resource. So can we make it work more? What do we do? Anybody? We do this exercise in our show. We do it in villages. We ask children and people. And the answer is almost immediate. But here I'm not getting the answer. How do I redesign this stick so that it works more? Correct, Baljit. That's the answer. One of the answers. There are many more answers. One answer Baljit has mentioned is put the powder on both sides of the stick, here and here. So you have increased the efficiency, but you have doubled the efficiency. Anybody else? Any other solution? One or I want, I mean, normally I get about eight or nine, but I will just be happy if we get two more. Anybody? How else can we improve? One suggestion Baljit has given very right, that you put the powder on both sides. Fine. What else can we do? Okay. So one can do short on the length. Let's say I've reduced this length to this much. And after shortening the length, I can take it, uh, I can make a hole here, put the sticks like this, Press it, the stick will pop up. And with the holder, I can hold it. And then this stick will work. So I can make two or three sticks out of three sticks out of one stick. And because I can't hold it with hand, I will have a holder in non-inflammable holder by which I can pick it. Good. Uh, no, Shalini, that will that will reduce the strength of the stick, then uh, it will break. So that will not work. But uh, no, Jeet, that will not work. 
uh, I'll give you some clues. Uh, when you apply, not just, well, that's an interesting idea, what uh, Avinash has mentioned, that you have hollow balls and put the stick in them and burn it. Next time, again, pick another ball of the powder, a kind of a crucible, a small crucibles. These are all crucibles in the patch box. Put them and then open. Aisha, you wanted to say something? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. By mistake. So, so, no, it doesn't matter. So, uh, you know when you apply nail polish, what happens? Any clue from there? Women should know much more. Girls will know much more about nail polish. What do they do when you apply? It dries very fast, isn't it? So you can have a solution of the powder, of the inflammable material, put a stick in it, dry it immediately, and burn it. And then again, stick. So dip and dry system, dip and dry system. That could be one model. And there could be many other models uh, that you can use. No, 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 no. I'm not asking Prasenjit of alternative uses of the stick. I'm talking about how do we make this stick more productive. So you can have a barbecue kind of a stick, longer uh, stick with a barbecue kind of balls. And then you burn one because it's art, actually, if you see this, it has burnt only about uh, two millimeters or two and a half millimeters. That's all. And then you extinguish. So one can do that. The reason I mentioned this example is that it's a good way to unfreeze the mind. I mean, these kind of puzzles unfreeze our mind. We start thinking in terms of solving problem rather than only complaining about that. It converts us from problem articulator to problem solver. And quickly then the discussion becomes more productive because people then start saying, okay, that's interesting. We can do this. Yes. And then we say, okay, but what about this problem? Oh, we know somebody in the village who has solved that problem also. And then they, so the whole purpose of our Shodhyatra, of our connection starts becoming clear and we start, we start finding innovators. So it's very important that we create bridges, learning bridges of this kind. So we are trying to map creativity, we are trying to tap innovation, we are trying to cap inertia, trying to do all the three in our learning walk. And let me take uh, you to talk to three or four teachers I have met in my life and you will find it very interesting. This is a teacher of 25,000 years uh, in uh, uh, Madhya Pradesh. Uh, somebody is speaking kindly, mute, mute, mute. So what is this teacher telling us? 25,000 years ago is telling us how to make a human figure. So make a cross, then make two lines. So you become two pyramids opposite. Then you draw a line and human figure is formed. As if this teacher is talking to me today and step by step, he or she has explained to me how to make human figures, how to make other figures. And I, as if I'm sitting in a class and a teacher 25,000 years ago gave a class and I'm able to learn from. This is the power of communication. And this idea of sharing openly is one of the method, one of the lessons of, of, of Shodhyatra that we find people are very open to share their solutions. So openness of the inclusive innovation system is one of the things that comes out very clearly. Let us look at another example of 2,000 years ago. From 25,000 years, we go to 2,000 years ago. So there was a teacher, very empathetic teacher, very wise teacher, and you will figure out his name in a minute when I tell you the story. So he asked a student to bring a glass of water. The student went and brought a glass of water. Teacher took the water, gave the empty glass to the student. The student went back and kept the glass in the kitchen. Teacher called him. So what did you do? Sir, you asked me to bring a glass of water. I brought the glass of water. I took it back to the kitchen. No, 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 no. Tell me, what did you do? He again repeated the same thing. And the teacher would keep on asking this question. Tell me exactly what you did. So after uh, about a few minutes, 10, 15 minutes, the student said, now I know what I did. Okay, tell us, what did you do? Sir, you asked me for a glass of water. I brought it, brought you a glass of water. You took the water. 
while going back i threw just a few drops on the ground i should have actually put them either in the water bowl of the birds or in the flower bed or somewhere the moment he said just a few drop he got his zen he got his wisdom because even a few drops of water have not to be thrown around but have to be purposefully used is a message that buddha is giving us 2000 years ago when there was no shortage of water 5000 people will form a town actually at that time a village of 5000 people will become was called as a nagar and at that time he is teaching us a problem because he had a foresight in 2020 or 21 or 19 they'll be short of water people will have to pay 15 rupees for a liter of water and it may not be available in all places so we should conserve that's a teacher 2000 years ago has taught us and uh, we need to learn from that we need to now we'll go to a teacher we met only for 20 years ago so there was a shepherd who was walking with a herd of about 200 sheep Lot tall fellow, tall lanky fellow, walking in a joyful mood. Some he was humming some dog music. So we waved a hand. Boy, look now, there are one minute. Tum se baat karni. He, will you please stop? I we want to talk to you. So he stopped. Now I thought here is a professor of I M A, very bright, brilliant fellow, has taught so bright students. I'm going to ask an intelligent question. I thought. So I said, if one of your sheep <coughs> gets mixed with herd of someone, how will you find out? He smiled. He said, "Do you have a paper?" So I said, "Yes, I have a paper in my hand. This is a, this was a program of Shruti Atta. I rolled it and folded it like this." He said, "Give me this piece of paper." So I gave him this piece of paper. He said, "Look, to me, all the letters look alike," and laughed and went away. Before I could. Realize he had slapped me on my face because to me all the sheep looked alike. I was illiterate in his language, language of naming sheep. I thought, how can somebody keep track of two hundred sheep? But he did. He knew. Some of you who know the communities which rear sheep or goat or cattle herders, they know each animal by its its form, name, design. Many times they give names also to them. And I didn't see the difference. To him, all the letters looked alike. He was illiterate in my language. I was illiterate in his language, and I was making fun of him in some sense. That was a slap on my face. How would I learn this unless I have an encounter of this kind? And I bring this to my class because this shows that no matter how proud we feel of our knowledge, how arrogant we feel about our expertise, there are the times when we are very naive. we ask very foolish questions and it is it is what recognizing uh, how you will be able to learn let's go to another teacher let's go to another teacher and this teacher karim bhai taught me a very very powerful lesson to change my way my behavior completely change my behavior So what happened? We had gone for making a film. Jyanti Bai from Indian Space Research Organisation. They used to have a television station at that time. It is in early nineties or some time around that. So we asked Karim Bai to sit on a rock. It was in North Gujarat near a sloth bear sanctuary. And I said I was to sit on another rock. And then uh, photographers said, "Why don't you take a, a branch of a plant? This plant growing around." and hold it let him hold in his hand he was a healer he was a herbalist so let him explain his knowledge by taking a stick a, a twig in his hand so he broke a twig a branch and gave it in his hand and karim bhai became upset and i said karim bhai kya hua why are you so angry did we need this twig and like a fool i said there are so many these were like roadside plants growing profusely on the roadside and like a fool though i am a student of ecology i am a student of biology i should have known better but i did not at that moment and i said there are so many of these on the roadside so what if we took a small branch he said what did you say so many 
nature has never too many every single plant or a blade of grass has its place you should have told me i would have sat near the plant and hold it in my hand that was a powerful lesson because earlier whenever i'll stand I'll sit in a lawn i pluck some grass blade and put it in my mouth or if i'm sit, standing near a fence or a or um, a shrub i'll pick up some leaves and crush them in my hand just like that without any reason it was not serving any purpose and maybe when some of you might be doing the same thing probably so uh I'm sorry, some of you are still obsessed with the discussion that we have had earlier and not paying attention to what I'm saying. But our purpose is not to create a stress on you, my dear friends. Our purpose is to help you to connect with the communities and use a little bit of your time in just defining a problem. I'm saying we are not expecting that you will be able to solve because you are not in the lab, many of you. And even if you were, you have to finish your thesis. So we're not expecting that. But even if you write a short note, maybe five pages, maybe two pages, maybe five, ten pages, that's up to you how long you want to write. And three of you, not one person. If you divide, one of you do the, does the review of literature, one of you does the review of uh, patents, and one of you identifies the solution and then put them together in a short note, that is enough. Our purpose is, if it's a publishable quality, we would like to publish in a book with your authorship. And if it is too casual, then we will leave it. We will get it. Each submission will be reviewed. So please get over that now. Focus here. You are missing some stories that I have learned a lot from. So my request to you all is kindly pay a little attention. And I'm sure you will enjoy that. Because this is something that will bring some insights. I don't know what insight you will learn. But isn't it true that many of you also do the same thing? Pluck some leaves, crush them in your hand. I also used to do that. Now I can't. The moment I pluck some leaf, uh, uh, I mean, I, my hand moves towards plucking a blade of grass or a leaf, Karimba is visible to me in front of me. Do you need this? So it's a very minimalist consumption behavior where you do not uh, consume or waste natural resources for sake of, for no good reason. I mean, you're not using anything. So that was a very important lesson I learned with Karimba. And uh, let's see another funny encounter we had during our first show yatra we were in a village near uh, Veer forest in Junagar. there's a lion sanctuary as you know the only only sanctuary where asiatic lion is found and we stayed in their sanctuary actually overnight that night but before we reached the lion sanctuary on the outskirts there was a person Ilyas Bhai who used to live there and we were told before by in the previous village that he's a very knowledgeable person and you can ask him any question about lion behavior and so on so we asked a very naive question. So when does lion come in this region where you live? He said, sir, lion lives here. It is you who come and go. He just changed the context of my question. And we were so embarrassed. He was right. That is the habitat of the lion. So naturally lion lives in that region. He doesn't come and go. That region, entire region belongs to him. You know that lion can go more than 80 kilometers or 100 kilometers in a day if he wishes to in search of his food or prey. So lion comes here, goes from one place to the other. So sometimes the way we define the problem by talking to common people, by talking to the community members, they because of the we have knowledge, they have wisdom. And it helps to talk to the elders, spend some time with them, and transform our worldview, transform our way of thinking so that we can be more productive, we can be more insightful. We can be more uh, counterintuitive in our thinking. So this is a lady I met in Champaran, Shodhyatra. You know, in Bihar, Champaran is the region where Mahatma Gandhi started the, uh, he, he, the, during the freedom struggle, when he went there, he realized that poor people were uh, so poor that, they, that many ladies had only one cloth to wear. They will wash it in the night or when they they had no other cloth to change. So they will wash it, dry it, and then wear the same cloth. So he decided not to wear any other cloth but one cloth. That is how then Gandhi decided that in Champar. So we met this lady. And you know, they, they, this is a grain bin. 
and in that route, many grain bins were there. Almost everybody had a grain bin outside their hut. If a hut was small, grain bin is one in which they store the grain. And this was the most beautiful one. Nobody had made so much effort to beautify, as you see here, through embossed drawing. So we asked her, why did you do that? She thought she had done a mistake. She said, but I know only this way of doing it. And we were, we were inspired that for there is a lady here, Ram Tamari Devi, for whom doing a mediocre job is helplessness. She can't do a mediocre job. She only knows how to do it in a most outstanding manner. Imagine, imagine a society if it could follow this lesson from Ram Tamari Devi and do whatever we do, no matter how small thing we do, and we try to excel in it. This country will be different. Our contributions will be different. Our life will be different. For her, excellence is imperative. She can't do any other job. And I wish this becomes a habit. Many people have this habit. Many of you have this habit, I'm sure. Even if somebody says, we will read it twice, three times, five times, so that the draft becomes better, then we will submit. Some of you will say, even the one draft, you will say it even without reading it properly. Sometimes people do that. I know that. I've had all kinds of students. And I don't like when somebody does not even read it two or three times before submitting to the professor. But this lady had perfected her art so much, must have spent so many more hours than others in making this great bit. Now, this is again from uh, Jharkhand, not Champaran, but Jharkhand. But you also have in Purulia, West Bengal, so many parts of Eastern India. You have this. Uh, uh, pots where you invite pigeon or other birds to come and stay. And this gunny bag that you see below, they uh, collect the excreta of the birds. So it's as a fertilizer. Some of you might know that the first fertilizer that has ever used in agriculture was guano. Guano was collected, the dropping of the bird from Latin America, Amazon forest was collected and brought to England as a manure. That was the first use of external fertilizer transported from one place to another. So they were doing this something similar. What does my institute do? Look at this. So first they put the spikes to prevent the birds to come. Then they put a sheet because the birds got used to the spikes on the air conditioner. Then they put the sheet. Now we are trying to keep the birds away. They are trying to attract the bird. Two different ways of looking at life and nature. You choose the one that you want. Choice is ours. But at least we have two, more, two different ways of thinking. If we didn't go to Shodhyatra and if we didn't see this, we would think this is the only way to think about. So Shodhyatras have helped us to widen our way of thinking. And it is very important that we, we uh, learn from the range of choices that society has created for us and learn from that. And see if it changes my way. See, if you look at the paradoxical way, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to share the contradictory ways of thinking. And when you do contradictory ways of thinking, sometimes new insights come because we are not uh, trying to be near the, I mean, we're not dealing with as tune as we are trying to have a distribution of the choices. So this could be a very interesting paradox. This was in Sikkim. Around August, September, we have a term break. So I used to take my students uh, to show their reports. We also have a course in IMA, apart from the summer and winter course, show the other that we have. Summer, we go to hot places. Winter, we go to cold places. So we went to Sikkim. And there was a very interesting festival taking place at that time. And we asked, what is the festival? Festival is that every person will keep some sprouted grains outside the window of their house. People will come and pick up some grains and leave some grains. You have to go to as many neighbors as necessary till you get nine kinds of sprouts. Nine kinds of sprout. So supposing three neighbors have the same sprout, say beans, then you still have one. So you have to go on, go on talking, visiting other, other houses. In a way, annually, you are trying to revisit your connections with your neighborhood. 
and the ritual was of nine sprouts, but actually it was a way of renewing our contact with our neighbors who we may not have visited because of being busy with our life. An interesting idea, very interesting idea of creating cultural uh, bonhomie, cultural congruence, cultural convergence in the community, helping people to learn, to find out each other's well-being, which in din of life, in hustle bustle of life, we sometimes forget. What time do we have break, Kananika? Nika, what time? Uh, seven o'clock, is that? What time do we have break, friends? Anybody? What time do we have break? Uh, 7.15? All right. 7.15. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go further. So, so the community can teach. And now, this is interesting. Uh, we also want to learn from nature. Many of you know about biomimicry, uh, but I'm not at this moment on biomimicry. I'll come to that next step. So we found this tree. I don't know if I've talked about it, but if I have, I will repeat this. So when we found this tree, we went close in Kangala, in Himachal Pradesh. And there's a conversation. I'm imagining this. So tree, I asked tree, Kya hua? what happened to you? He said, look, I was not supposed to branch, but I did at the base. And then to correct that, I made it into a parallel stack. I said, that's true. In fact, when I'm talking to my class now or anytime, a lot of cells in my body are going through mutation. Thankfully, these are not cancerous. There is a mechanism in my body which either repairs those cells, replaces them, bypasses them, or rejuvenates them. And I'm able to talk to you. This process that living systems have is called autopoiesis. Autopoiesis is self-governed, self-correcting, self-designed. So imagine a knife which you have designed with a metal of this kind that every time it cuts the fruits or vegetables or whatever, it becomes sharper instead of becoming blunter. And there used to be a tradition of this kind of knife makers which would get sharpened when they were used. The kind of temper that they gave to the metal made it behave. So things which can learn, which can renew themselves, which can... Now with AI tools, we are trying to make many things learn. But as a society, as a lab, as a scholar, can I create this capacity in myself that I learn from the errors that either I make or they are made because of the environment in which I am? And I learn from them and move on. So that my integrity, integrity of my system, my being is not violated, is not disturbed. So your organizations can be created where people will have no hesitation in sharing their mistakes. I remember once Dr. Mashilka was telling me an example. He, at that time, was DG. So he went to his lab in Pune. He weekend he used to go there. So he carried an issue of new scientist which had a self-organizing gel, photograph of self-organizing gel on the cover. Since he has been working on self-organizing gels for a long time, this was of great interest to him and his students. So he went to the lab and showed it to his PhD students. Uh, uh, this is such a nice thing. And uh, immediately one student, a lady student said, sir, I had seen this gel. Dr. Michelle said, then why didn't you tell me? Sir, it was looking so odd. So different, I thought maybe it's an error. And Ramashuri said, look, do you know, we could have been on the cover if we had published that. Sometimes we are too, we're not surprised, we are too surprised maybe, but we are not confident that the error that we are calling is actually an insight, which might be the new way of solving problem. Is it, is it something that happens? Let me stop for a minute here. Does it happen sometimes in your lab? Has it happened that when sometimes what you thought was an error actually was a breakthrough and either you missed it or you, you got it? I mean, both yes, sir. yes, sir. I have one incident. Uh, please tell me. Uh, this incident come, uh, I'm from uh, Nayo Goa. So we had a project uh, for Ramsetu actually. 
yes and uh, we had a, uh, we supposed to measure a uh, sea level yeah and uh, uh, so what we did that uh, this was a pressure gauge sea level and uh, we deployed at the bottom of the ocean uh, then uh, uh, after some time the sand was so much that it got buried in that uh, sand hmm and uh, so we uh, after about uh, one month we went uh, retry hmm and uh, when we look the data and uh, data was looking uh, very uh, noisy kind of thing yeah so uh, this uh, uh, so this was presented to a, a committee i mean the forum was there and uh, among them uh, uh, audience one person uh, he got up and he he stood and he start firing he started firing mm. he said one nonsense we are showing this all this thing this is not a sea level uh, game mm. so uh, uh, then we said this is the actual measurement what we got from that uh, system mm. and uh, then we showed him uh, what the conventional way of uh, looking at is there on the chart Mm. and uh, uh, on the chart what they do that uh, when they measure this uh, uh, level there are lot of mm. spikes are there and uh, this spike uh, that uh, operator what they do with the pencil he smoothen it like a uh, low pass filter kind of thing correct so when you get the data data looks very smooth <laughs> that that person he never uh, saw this kind of uh, always he saw that uh, smooth data kind of thing So oh. he was very much upset with us. So ah. we told him this is not a uh, this is not a uh, that what you are thinking. This is a real observation we have. So uh, so it is not that all this noise. These are actual data. Very interesting. Very interesting. And I am happy that you did that because uh, there are times when scholars are made to shut up because somebody in high authority uh, questions and uh, silences the dissent or the divergence. but i'm happy that you stood your ground and uh, and uh, made this point because there are many many times anybody else has an example where you would have missed an insight or you did miss an insight or you would have missed an insight if you had not uh, differentiated between noise and signal in your data or in your in your work because you were too hesitant in looking at the odd observation something which is beyond the trend line which is not following your predicted path but that happened to be the breakthrough any other example you can more talk in third person even if you have done a smoothening as which i was mentioning is all right i mean i know that sometime we have done this we may have done this because we nobody will accept our argument and therefore some smoothing might have been done but uh, some of you might say no 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 that's the way it is and i will have to mention you know when you look at Im uh, immunological uh, response of certain kind of compounds we were doing a study with chem biotech in kolkata very interest very uh, reputed lab and they gave them some samples and at different doses the activity was going up and down so there was immuno modulator and i didn't know that as well as when abhijit who was in charge who was the head of the lab explained to me that look this is very interesting because these are immuno modulators with the slightly increase in the concentration the activity is actually going down uh, at low concentration activity is very high. is high then it goes down then it goes up something like that was happening there was not a clear pattern in that particular extract so he says you should watch it you should look at it carefully this is something to be studied better so there are times when we have some counter intuitive uh, or at least in their mind by trained by them is not yet equipped to look at uh, oddity of uh, behavior of uh, observations and therefore we get worried we get disturbed so point i'm trying to make is that in nature you have all kinds of variations and it is useful therefore to pay attention to those variations uh how many of you have studied biomimicry some of you must have done it anybody can explain what is biomimicry any biology student so biomimicry you are saying biomimicry yes uh, it's more like camouflage or something uh, the lizard change colors and then they try to avoid it from their predator or 
So any example, Ketan, you know where biomimicry has led to an industrial product? No, sir. Not on industry side. Yeah. Anybody? I'll give you some examples. How do we learn from nature and develop very viable, functional, and breakthrough products? Uh, sir? Yeah. David? Uh, yes. What about that, uh, you know, uh, in big skyscrapers and all the window they use is actually uh, inspired from uh, lotus leaves. You know, the, the waters, they don't stay on top of lotus leaves when they fall on top of it. And I think in skyscrapers and all, they use those kinds of windows where... Uh, dust won't be able to uh, settle on those windows and if you just pour water they'll just roll down and it's like self-cleaning process i think actually you're right because in volvo a very famous auto company yes i was once doing a program on innovation for them in shanghai in china and i they had just started a program which many of their marketing people didn't know yeah. so what they do they make the paint of the car hydrophobic um, yes so when they make the paint hydrophobic, the water wouldn't stand on it and therefore the paint will not be eroded. Yes. And this comes from uh, the study of the lotus leaf, as you rightly mentioned. So hydrophobic surfaces originally uh, caught into the mind of the scientists and scholars when they looked at naturally certain surfaces where the water wouldn't stand. Uh, there are other examples of this kind where this happens. So, have you heard about Velcro? Uh, yes, sir. I think. Uh, what is the what is the root of the Velcro design? Where did it come from? Which biological org uh, organism? Anybody? Somebody should be there in the class. Who knows it? We use no, no, not lizard. Uh, not gecko. No. See, there is a plant called as no, 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 not not caterpillars. It came from cockal burr. So if you if you go to the net and write cockal burr, cockal burr, and write velcro, you will find that example. So let me show you this. Uh, this is uh, this is a Swiss scientist, 1950s. Let me share this one. So you see this. I should first close this. I think. You see this, Kokelbar. This is a fruit which sticks to your clothes. Some of you might have gone to the uncultivated areas and you find that this fruit sticks to your clothes. So you remove them. So George D. Mestrel was curious. Why do they attach the cloth? Now many of us have observed these things, but we don't ask a question. Why does it happen? My point that I'm trying to make is that nature teaches us many interesting designs from which we can develop many industrial useful products. So he looked at it in the microscope and then he found that hook-like shape of that spine, as you can see here, it is, it is an enlarged photograph. Are you able to see that? So this mechanism led to the design of Velcro. So when you know Velcro, when one of the edge, one is a uh, kind of rings, other side has a hook. And when you push it, if the hook goes inside and sticks it, when you pull it, it comes out. And that is what led to one of the most widely used product like Velcro in watches, in shoes, in ladies' parts. So many places you use Velcro in bags, you use Velcro. So just an example of how uh, nature teaches us. Any other example anybody would like to give? Very famous example. And all of you have, have seen that example. About fish. Anybody? Gokharu, that's right, Yusuf. It is Kokalbar is nothing but Gokharu. Any other example of uh, material or shape inspired by nature?
you have seen the aerodynamic shapes. Where did they come from? Bird. Yes. And as long as as long back as uh, Leon, Leonardo da Vinci, who was a great artist and a, a very serious uh, uh, explorer of nature, he used to make drawings. Some of you might have seen his. It is available on the net, actually free. You can download that and look at his notes, his workbook where he used to make drawings of nature, including human body, and he will draw from them those proportions. So the golden ratio was discovered by him, the ratio between the neck and the shoulder. With. And so like that, he, I mean, he found some very basic ratios by which the beauty, so-called beauty as we see, uh, gets uh, reflected in our mind, as we call it. I mean, it's an odd number, but it's symmetrical in some sense, because we have been impressed by that number that nature has. Fibonacci series, another example of nature's own. So mathematics has benefited from nature's uh, patterns. Uh, the, the astronomy has benefited from nature. You all know about Jantar Mantar in Jaipur or uh, observatories in different parts of the world. You know Stain, Stonehenge, where if you look at the shadows of those stones on a particular day in a year, you find them aligned with certain constellation of the stars. So right from time immemorial, people have looked at nature. I mean, all, the planetary movements were designed, were observed much before astron before we had telescopes, before we had the geometry and mathematics and uh, other advanced tools. Yes, you're right. So, Babita, you are very right that the many patches have been designed by looking at how mosquitoes bite your body. And uh, this patch, now it is becoming more and more popular. Now you are getting uh, the uh, programmed delivery of drugs. So there is a sensor which observes how much sugar you have and that the patch will release the insulin according to your sugar level and not just a static uh, unit of tablet or an injection that you will take. So you modulate the dose. I mean, the, the patch monitors, which is an intelligent patch. So you're absolutely right that uh, uh, there's a lot of, so much we are learning from nature. And it's a very important part of learning from nature that we could, we could uh, see how oddity or how, I mean, nature is very symmetrical. Uh, once uh, uh, there's a famous uh, and this is the example, and then I'll stop this example for a break. Um, uh, Conrad Lorange, Conrad Lorange. So Conrad Lorange once uh, asked this question, and he said, uh, "Look at all the uh, look at all the birds in the world. Look at all the birds in the world." <clears throat> he said, "Look at all the." Uh, Trees in the world. So you look at all the trees. In the world. Look at all the fishes in the world. Everybody looked at all the fishes in the world. Then he said, now find out the angle at which the fins, the branches, and uh, the uh, and fins, branches, and the feathers of the bird are attached. The trunk. What do you think is the range of angle? Entire nature, whole world. He asked a very simple question. He said, I, I can explain the entire diversity of birds. Yes, man. Yes, man. Simadri? Simadri, are you answering the question? Anybody, what is the range at which the feather, the fin, and the branch of tree are attached to the trunk? Anybody, what is the range? What is the range? Anybody? Hmm? Can it? No, 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 no. Range, range, Kesha, range. Within which all the branches of the world can be seen. Huh? Anybody?
anybody please no 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 jayshree no think again think again think again conrad lawrence mm keshav uh, think of the minimum angle and the maximum angle so are you saying all branches are minimum of 55 degrees not less than that think again think again think again think again anybody quickly please anybody anybody no 45 question i mean just stand stand up for a minute and look at your hand as a branch and then see no no arun no how can it be 360 you look at a tree and look at different trees in your mind think of different trees in your mind and think of the minimum vipasha think of the minimum angle at which a branch is away from the trunk what is the minimum angle at which it can stoop there are branch there are trees where branches stoop low they are almost like hang but there will be some minimum distance and some maximum distance the maximum cannot be more than 90 degree no minimum 15 that's right so he makes a statement he says nature is very parsimonious nature is very parsimonious he says look at uh all the trees in the world all the fishes in the world all the birds in the world and you find that the range is very narrow the entire diversity can be explained within the range of 15 to 19 90 and then he says nature is very parsimonious it has few designs and it plays with them all the time there's a very interesting book called as biological basis of knowledge uh, if you have some of you who are interested in reading more about this uh, it is a uh, written by report riddle uh, and you can biological basis of knowledge r e d i d l e report and you can biology of knowledge this is the book let me show you you can you can read this book and you will benefit a great deal if you did uh this is the book so this is there was only one paragraph i have i will show you the after break the photograph i mean the illustration but this is the book by reporter riddle he was a follower or a disciple of uh, cornet lawrence who got nobel prize for ethology and uh, published in 1984 and there is one paragraph in this book where he makes this statement and i interpreted that into uh, detail so you will all realize that we can learn a lot from nature just as we are trying to learn from common people we can also learn from nature and common people's understanding of nature we can learn a lot great deal so uh, those of you who are interested in some understanding biology of knowledge that is what he says evolutionary basis of reason so for example the last example and then i will he says let us look at the skirt of a woman cover of a microscope and the bell of a church what is the common
bell shape. And then he asks a question, why does nature prefer bell shape? So like that, they're very interesting questions in this book. It's, the book is very interesting. How does nature develop so-called reason, evolutionary basis of reason? How do we argue? How do we develop logical statements? How do we ask these questions, which these questions, which force us to see patterns? You know that science is nothing but looking for patterns in the data. Just now what Vijay was mentioning, there was a pattern that wherever there are sand deposits, the values will go down, wherever there is a stone or other deep uh, crevices, the value may go up, that means the peak may be higher, and that is the reality of the surface. That is the way it is, that, that is the way it should be shown. And uh, nature tells us to look at fluctuations, not to look at unevenness in a manner that we all then develop insights from. So I'll stop here, have a break for how do, what time are we coming back? 15 minutes. So let's say 7.30, around 7.30, we'll be back. Thank you so much. See you then. Stretch yourself and uh, refresh. Hello? You have a break till 7.30. We have a break till 7.30, just to refresh, stretch, drink water.
ใช่เลยอันนั้นเป็นไฟไเนี่ยพลาสติกนะ Welcome back All right so I'll go through a few more things and then we will uh, share I've shared reported's wiki page and you can 
uh, then look up uh, the examples. Let me share the presentation. So, all right, so this is the example I was showing you. An idea was it makes it very simple. Can we be also? Kindly, kindly, kindly switch off, switch off, switch off your song. So if nature, we can learn frugality, multifunctionality, diversity, and resilience, and the form, future, and functions of innovations, how do they reflect? So I was telling you about Conrad Lorenz, and these were the three slides that I had made based on a paragraph in his book. Uh, look at the feathers, look at the fins, as I told you, and also look at the branches. Now, one of you mentioned that branches sometimes go upward. Well, you can see the angle from either side. Uh, uh, I mean, that's up to you from which angle, which side you look at it. But the basic point was that uh, the branch may be, the node may be at a particular angle, and then the branch may twist upward or downward. That's a little detail. But generally, between 50 to 90, you will find. 15 to 90, you will find all the ranges. So that's what uh, he argues and he says that nature has very few designs and it plays with them all the time. Obviously, nature is very parsimonious and frugal, therefore. So many times when we look for how do we find frugal designs, how do we, what, what, was it, what is the connection between grassroots innovations and what I'm talking here? The connection is frugality. Connection is that if you either prefer to waste, no, have no waste, nature has no waste, you try to use minimum material for maximum energy efficiency, that's what nature does. And it regulates it very well. So those of you who are with that botany background know that in desert, the stomatal cells will close, stomata will close when the water stress increases, it will open when the water is abundant, when we go to look at the shapes of the trees from, let's say, Siliguri, and we go up to 15,000, 16,000 feet, which I have done in uh, hilly areas, you will notice that first it is a round shape of the canopy, then it becomes slightly scattered, then it becomes slightly pyramidical, then it becomes steep pyramid like pine trees and then it becomes a reed and after 15,000, 60,000 reed also disappear then there's a snow line so nature is trying to economically shape as the water becomes less and the in this case of course the plant shape is being optimized to conserve water and yet continue to reproduce itself the shapes of the trees and leaves for that matter Explain to us, right? Wise, if you go from Udaipur to let's say Jaisalmer in Rajasthan, horizontally you go from uh, sub humid to let's say or uh, humid to arid, you go, or you go from low altitude to high altitude. Either way, you move as you move towards Jaisalmer in Rajasthan or some parts of Ramnathpur for that matter, and you notice that the uh, plant which can conserve water by having Sometimes only stem, no leaves. A modified stem, of course, which also works like for, for photosynthesis. Then that's what it is doing. So nature can teach us a lot of insights about the way energy has to be optimized, and the way shapes and form function and features have to be optimized. So what are we trying to do? We are trying to learn from four teachers in nature. For a uh, teacher who is uh, within, teacher around, that is peers, teacher in nature, and teacher among common people. These are the four teachers from whom we are trying to learn in Shodhya. And uh, what are we trying to do? As we say, saw here, 
we are trying to search, we are trying to spread. So we share innovation that we have seen in other places. We celebrate innovation. We honor people at their doorstep. And we sense the unmet social needs. We make an inventory of problems that people are facing so that we can share them with other communities. Sometimes uh, one person's problem becomes a provocation for somebody else's innovation. So there are different kinds of uh, routes through which we move. And this is from uh, Dimaji in Assam. We found a lot of uh, kinds of looms. I mean, you can see the simplest of its kind. On the ground itself, there's a loom and the baby will sit there. This is, of course, sitting posture. This is on the ground. Almost every house. Uh, this is the, uh, in 2009, I'm showing you that this is the system of water filter they had. And this was not, of course, sufficient. They had the clay in it. They had sand in it. They had stones in it. They had pebbles in it and so on. And yet, while water was becoming clean, it was not devoid of all iron because when we moved with this water through the uh, through the ag agitation in the water, the oxidation took place and the water became brown. So this is another interesting thing that we observed. In one of the villages of Imaji, we found there were about seven, eight different kinds of gears for running a drill, for shaping wood. And all the three, as you can see, have one common feature. What is the common feature? Can you, anybody tell me what is the common feature in these gears? Somebody from mechanical engineering or engineering? What is the common feature? How is energy being transferred? No, no, paddle is there in some cases, not all. But what is the design community? The, of the first one doesn't have paddle. You have to move it with hand. So, no. Anything else? Any, any typical pattern comes to your mind of transferring energy from no see a uh, little more effort see as you can see let me mention because time is limited in all the three cases yes but how is it being transferred from large gear to a small gear in traditional technologies for reasons that you can imagine Energy gets transferred from large gear to small gear. So look at the spinning wheel, Charkha, Gandhi ji ka, from large wheel to small. Look at Prussian wheel for water, large gear to small gear. Look at the glass blowers wheel, large gear to small gear. And these wooden drills. All of them have from large gear, large gear, Deepak, large gear to small gear. Because when you don't have a source of energy, you have to generate high RPM revolution per minute at the drill level. You can do that through only large tools. Whereas modern technologies have a small gear to large gear. So you have a watch where there's a small gear that moves the large gear of hands of the watch. Various solutions, various devices that you have, you have a small engine moving bigger objects or carrying bigger loads. So this is very interesting that there's a there's sometimes contrast in the way society lived before engines were invited, invented. And that's right, large wheel to small. Now in modern, you have small to large, small gear to large gear. And this is very interesting. So sometimes you we understand that how did people manage? If you look at a history of technology, you start understanding how did they resolve the conflicts? And then how was energy optimized in this process? Correct, exactly, Pradeep, that you mentioned, that one gear will move large number of rotations of the small gear. That's how it happened. So let's go further. Now, we were we are now in Mizoram, near Aival as well, and we were having a show there. And we found that almost every house there had a rooftop water harvesting. Rooftop water harvesting. So you have rooftop water harvesting, you have rooftop water harvesting. And... One could say that Mizoram is the water harvesting capital of the country. Uh, almost every house, because these people used to live at the basin area, where during the insurgency, the Indian army moved them to the upper ranges. There was no water there. So they had to collect water from the rain, rain water. So this became uh, almost a condition for survival. And they were moved. Now, how conscious they are. We found this picture. 
there was a pump uh, 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 tap and a drop was drizzling out of it. They didn't want to waste even that drop. And in this canister, they were collecting drop by drop drizzle because the wash was not so good. Can you imagine? Have you ever come across a region which will care about even a drop of water the way they are doing it? <laughs> Please, 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 please switch off your mic, please. If you have a question, please, you, you're welcome to stop me anytime you want. So there was another example we found, very interesting improvisation. There is a drill here, there's a gear which is not motorized here, cutting wood. And they realize that the gear will become, cutter will become hot. As you know, some of you know, that when it cuts wood or any material, it will become hot. So they uh, organize a drip. You know, here you see like a group drip. drip. And under the, this, this, we have kept it on the top just to show how it works. But it was actually in the lower side of the wooden plank. And it will sprinkle water on the cutter so that cutter doesn't become too hot. And the cutting can continue to take place. Now, you may not find this in the wood cutting workshops. Even in IITs, they don't use that system of cooling. But here, this person has discovered a very interesting way of increasing efficiency, and which we observed on the way. Here, the, the, we met this boy in near Ranchi. We had a show there at the Jharkhand. And Sajid Ansari, his father, brought him to, the, to meet us. And what did Sajid do? Sajid saw that his mother used to do cleaning of uh, rice and spent a lot of time. So he was in class seven. He invented a very interesting system using the centrifugal force to separate the grain from the inert material because they will, when the movement takes place, they will come out at different uh, different shoots because of the velocity, the weight, mass, versus mass and velocity. And this way he separated them. Very interesting. In fact, he was invited by a German company which designs threshers, threshing plants, big threshing plants, to Brahma, to Bengaluru, and then they were gave him a scholarship for a year. His school also saved his fees, and he was given an Ignite Award also. So, uh, at any level, you can find innovations. This why I might have shown you already about the hand pump. How there's so much wastage of water, and then you have. A uh, simple improvement, one small one for drinking water, the bigger one for filling the tank. And of course, if there's a spill, still a spilled water, it was for the animals. Uh, this is a design defect because when you pump all the time, the lower part of the casing gets cut. So they put a wooden piece. But what did people do in Bastar? In Bastar, they put a rod here so that it doesn't get, it doesn't press against the lower edge of the cutting of the casket. and then. Here they have used a tire to prevent the same problem of cutting. It's a bad design. Sometimes people try to repair or find temporary solutions, but that's not the way to deal with the design. We have to make them such that they don't need these kind of temporary adjustments. So uh, this is a slide I had probably shown you, but if not, did I show this before? Anybody in the class, please? Did I show this to you earlier? No, sir. Okay, there are two sides of it. Now, this is a, some kind of, I'm summarizing what we have done today. We have tried to talk about learning from four teachers. We're trying to learn from within, learn from peers, learn from nature, learn from common people. And if we, this has to become a part of our pedagogy in our life, that we want to be open in learning. Then there are two dimensions of open innovation system. Inside out, which means I share my work with others. So if you remember one of the ratio I asked you to monitor was download to upload ratio. If my download to upload ratio is very high, that means I upload much less and download much more. That means inside out is low. I'm not sharing my work, my ideas, my uh, work, uh, my innovations with outside. Outside in, that is the second dimension of this matrix, where am I willing to learn from outside? And some of us, yes, yeah, some of us, no. Depends how widely we read, how widely we review, how widely we read. I mean, look at the 
information that is available in our domain or other domains, how interdisciplinary we are, all of that will determine how much outside in we have. So if both are low, as you can see in this segment. Low inside out, that means I'm sharing less. Low outside in, that is I'm learning less. That is an ostrich kind of behavior. Such labs, such organizations, such institutions, such companies, such communities are doomed. There's no future for them. They'll become poorer, they will become, they will not be able to retain talent, and they will be denuded, they'll be deserted in some sense. But if inside out is low, but outside in is high, inside out is low, but outside in is high, these are like crowdsourcing companies, when record administer sources more than 70% uh, products that they market in the product in the market they are coming from ideas from outside the company. CM is with PNG. Uh, they were going down, and the moment they started sourcing ideas from outside, that means not relying only on their own RD, their profitability increased, their product range increased, their consumer connectedness. They are like a sponge. So they take an idea from you, they will pay you some money, but they will not tell you. How many million they saved from that idea for which they paid ten thousand dollars? That's the unfortunate part. But if they did, still pay ten thousand. But at least tell people that your idea saved me one point five million or two million. Then my confidence in my ideas can go up. So even if you don't pay more, doesn't matter. But at least you tell people. But they don't. Then you have this low outside end. I'm so advanced, so ahead of the curve that I don't need to learn too much from outside. But I share a lot with others. So Tesla had opened all its patents in public. Anybody could now manufacture batteries for electrical vehicles. Why did they do that? Anybody can tell me why did they do that? Anybody? Why did they do that? Because, okay, so if I've shared it all right. So they did it because they wanted to have more competition and more uh, companies making electrical cars so that nobody will set up only for it. So they were pollinators. And then, of course, uh, the fourth one is high learning, high sharing. And we put our network in that category, having a network. And many of you can be in that category who are a blogger, who share their ideas openly, who are not too stingy about sharing ideas or giving feedback to others. Uh, even half mature ideas they will share. They don't worry about whether anybody else will use it. So much, so what? They will have more ideas. But they will also make friends with the strangers who read your blog. So it's a very interesting set where open innovation brings new friends, friends who appreciate, who are like you, who also share, who also appreciate open ideas. So the future belongs to open innovation, not withstanding the fact that many people still try to patent. And you can, I don't mind, but at least after patenting, publish, share, put more information in the, and many times the things that you did not complete, but you thought about them, can also be shared. So all my work is in open access, no password required, no protection. So if you go to anilg.sashti.org, more than 500, 600 writings, papers, publications, all of them are in open access, no restriction. And I don't care what general policy is. I decide, that's it. And you know that MIT put all its courseware out in open. Harvard made it obligatory for all their faculty to publish, to put their papers in open, no matter what the policy of journal is. Because if you're reputed, if you want to use the social capital well properly, you can do that without caring about it. And no journal will have the courage to then proceed against you because they know that they won't get your publication next time. They won't get your submission next time. So particularly those who have good social capital, must create example of sharing widely, and this helps a great deal. So we, I hope these are some of the examples that maybe you have seen it. Uh, this was a girl, class eight, who had designed. Did I share this Walker example before? Otherwise, I will stop it. Have I? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. So I will not share these examples. There were some more which I had, but let us not share them. I would, let us complete. The point which I've tried to make today. There are three or four or five points that we have made. One point is that when we want to learn, learn from history, 25,000 year old teacher, 2,000 year old teacher, 200 year old teacher, 
I did not mention about 200 years old. So 200 years ago, what happened after Beijing Restoration 1865-66, Japan made a committee, a group, several several subgroups, and asked and asked them to visit different parts of the world to study how children are taught. Somebody went to Africa, somebody went to Europe, somebody went to India, somebody went to Caribbean and other parts of the world. They came back after a year and a half because at that time uh, it was all by ship. And then they wrote a report, which I have summary of in my library, called as Educational Plan for Japan, 200 year educational plan for Japan. By the turn of the century, Japan was the first Asian country to become 100% literate. They had planned for 200 years. They achieved it much earlier. That is the advantage of long-term dream. Never hesitate in taking, having dreams which will, which seem at this moment with your resources and network, they seem, you may not be able to do it now, maybe not for 30 years, 40 years. But if you have the dream, for all that you know, time will compress. Instead of 50 years, instead of 30 years, instead of 40 years, you might do it in four years, maybe five years. Because as they say, the whole universe conspires to make your dream come true. So long-term dreams have a great merit. Society progresses because of those people and those communities which see in long term. They see far ahead. And that's why their energy gets concentrated, converged. So as a human being, as a scholar, I would strongly encourage you to have long-term vision of what, where you want to be after 30 years, 40 years. What is that area where you are? Without you referring to you, the world cannot discuss that subject. That kind of excellence that you have. The world will not discuss that subject without referring to you, with our Sarnali or Aisha or Nitin or Anurag, because you are so well established in that field. And that is that will require sustained effort. Uh, Alauddin Khasa, who was the teacher of uh, our famous Ravi Shankar, used to say that it takes, takes 10 years to understand how to listen to music. It takes 10 years to understand how to play music. It takes another 10 years to understand and to perform that you play and other people can listen. He gave a 30 year apprenticeship program for his students. Well, some people learned earlier, some people learned later. That's a different matter. But it's a very interesting point that a consistent deepening of furrow for a long enough time, not getting distracted into too many different directions, does make you a point of reference. And the scholars who have become point of reference follow that line and it helps. At the same time, cross-fertilizing our ideas by talking to common people, by traveling in the forest and the mountains, to look at nature deeply, to learn from the nature, also fertilizes and our imagination. So while I may like to focus on one problem, doesn't mean that I should only read about that problem. We should read widely. We should meet people widely. And if you meet common people, the people, children and uh, farmers and artisans, I can tell you that you will be able to learn ways of solving problems that otherwise will elude us. We may not even remember that. So I would strongly urge that think about uh, talking to people who do not expect to learn. And if you remember, one of the first assignments was learning from service providers, learning from the servants, learning from the driver, learning from the lift person, learning from the gardener, learning from the lab attendant. You know, lab attendants have worked for such a long time, but I mentioned this and I'm repeating it today. Sometimes make them sit in your research discussion. And mentions, sir, we are not getting this result. What could I have been doing wrong? And that fellow will say, sir, this experiment ko aise kariye na. Aapke jo hai, maine dekha tha, ek student ne aise kiya tha, to uska result aaya tha. That fellow has saw and seen hundreds and thousands of students over the last 30, 40 years. They have deep insights. But we seldom involve in our discussion. Is there anyone who has involved, learned something from a lab attendant? Anybody in the meeting? Can one, one or two examples be given? Anybody? where you were struggling with a problem and you talked to the lab attendant and they found a solution from them. Chaitanya, Jay, Sorubi, anybody? Dipanjali, Kavya, Kaushu, Tishani. Anybody who learned something insightful from a lab attendant? Nobody? 
How can it be? Yes, sir. There was one incident uh, ah, when please. there was a miniaturized 3D printer, and hmm. that 3D printer had some offset. Like there is a software called DoraWare, and hmm. when you put the file in there, there is some offset. So every time while we were printing it, there were some errors. So there was a, a professional who was using it, who was a lab attendant, and actually he knew it that how 0.75 mm offset is always there. So he actually changed the uh, drawings and dimensions. and the printing was perfect just because he had some experience with that particular prototype very good example where which lab is it uh, sagar it's csiu sir chandigarh chandigarh very interesting example what is the name of the uh, attendant i would like to refer to them refer to him in my class if in future what yes, is sir, that, uh, that is sir uh, mr harsh sir mr harsh from iistc also sir. my request is that uh, kindly convey my appreciation to her tell him that professor gupta appreciated your contribution and mentioned this to entire class that people like you are very insightful we should have respect you more than what we have done in past and your knowledge really is very valuable do convey yes. ha na definitely sir i'll convey yeah, sir because what happens many times agar this is good that you acknowledge and it saved lot of effort you would have found it out maybe with probably lot of hit and trial isn't it but he saved the effort so i think it is useful uh, and then a very interesting example that rupaprata has mentioned where in isc a security guard uh, was doing some beekeeping conservation and uh, students of lakvendra gadkar who was a good friend he was also member of the biodiversity authority once and Have learned from that. That's Mr. Ponappa. Ponanna, very nice. We need to collect such examples. I would request you that not because it is an assignment, just for our own growth. If you all, if you share some examples, first of all, it is an. I will learn. I mean, I have a selfish interest. I and Anamika will learn. We will tell other batches those examples. So then, but you would also have given visibility. You know, Honeybee Network gives visibility, voice, and velocity to the ideas of common people. To me, lab attendant is also common person. who is not as qualified as you are who is not as accomplished as you are who is not uh, whose status is not as high as yours will be and your is but these people have insights they have knowledge they have experience they have wisdom and they are keen observation so i would request you all to pay attention a little more and be little more respectful to these people who have been working and assisting you for years and listen to them sometime discuss with them make them sit in your meeting of when the professor is discussing research tell the professor can a professor can we invite harsh also can we invite uh, geeta also can we invite so and so also because they would also listen to our discussion maybe they have some suggestions to make and i am sure by and large professors would not say no it just is starting a new tradition starting a new culture in our labs so that we start listening to the lab attendants and sometimes even vendors for that matter people who have supplied you those equipments or those chemicals if you discuss with them look i'm not getting good results with this batch of your chemical or whatever uh, it may be and then the person will say okay let me check sometimes the batch may have a problem sometimes the way we are using it may have a problem and they might have some insights they may consult their experts in their manufacturing plant and they might say that look not when you are using it i that keep it under low temperature for some time and then use it because it behaves differently when it is at a higher temperature or something like that so i hope that some of you will take time off to talk to the people at so called lower administrative status in your own organization in your own lab but also talk to the people outside your lab in the campus but also outside the campus whenever you get time and discuss with them about their own life and understand how they cope with the stresses they cope with the problems and sometimes you have a challenge socrates used to do that socrates used to talk to children very deep philosophical question and children in their innocent way will answer questions as they thought it fit and he learned a lot so if you read that dialogues of socrates you will find that the very deep philosophical question he asked innocent minds and got deep insights about how an untainted unpolluted untrained mind reacts to a question and that gave him some insight which otherwise humanity would have lost because of his deep reflections on human mind and human actions so sometimes we should talk to even children for that matter and ask them that look if you had a problem of this kind what would you do and 
for all that you know, children can come out with wonderful solution. We have been giving awards to children for a long time, and we were never uh, tired of appreciating that. And uh, some other time we will discuss more. But thank you so much uh, for all being around. If there's any question quickly, we will take it up. Maybe for five minutes, I will request your indulgence. If anybody has any question, please go ahead. Any comment? Any confusion still? Or Uh, I would only say that uh, please consider talking to strangers, talking to people who you think are from different profession, talking to vendors of your lab, talking to, uh, let me just tell one example and then close. So what Dr. Dr. Pushpa Bhargav was building the CCMP lab many years ago, I'm talking about. And one day, the person who has been given order for uh, water fittings came to him and said, Sir, I will not supply these fittings to you. But Bhargav said, But why wouldn't you supply? We have given you order. Your previous work was very good. Your rates are reasonable. Sir, I realize that when you are building the lab, you're trying to find every uh, material of the best quality. There's another person in Hyderabad who has better fitting than me, mine. You should buy from him. Now look at this. This person got inspired by Dr. Bhargav's uh, sincerity of purpose in procuring materials for the building lab, which he wanted to be of excellent and outstanding nature. But obviously, being a biological scientist, how would he know where the best fittings are? He gave a tender and people applied. Now, it is possible that the person who had the best fitting did not apply. How would he discover this knowledge? How would this... Uh, expertise of the vendors will un be uncovered. So therefore, this, uh, interestingly enough, he awarded him, but he also appreciated that people uh, do not have to always uh, look at only maximizing their personal interest. When they identify with your values, they share them so much that even at personal cost, they will contribute to the institutional interest. Now, there are some questions. Let me see. Uh, assignment survey, what we need to do that. Now, please ignore this the, the questionnaire, the form that we have sent you today, as Anamika mentioned. We will revise it and we'll make it uh, in such a way that the group that you form, you will write your synopsis. You will mention the resource that you're using there, the region from which the problem is, and then that synopsis will be your basic contribution for the paper that you're going to write. So therefore, nothing more needs to be done. That's verified. Uh, about the innovator that you had mentioned earlier, those of you who are interested in talking to the innovator, and uh, uh, can, uh, you want to contribute to them solving the problem, you're welcome. This is voluntary. Uh, innovator will benefit if you did contribute. And we will arrange the facility. Now, I do not know, uh, NPL person, about your question. That question only is yes, I will answer, but I cannot tell you that we introduced this course uh, because we felt that it, and I, from your from your response so far, I'm very, we are both very inspired that you are finding it interesting enough to deepen your insight about the creativity and innovation potential at the societal level. And if this has helped you to deepen your insights, uh, we are very happy. Uh, we will be benefiting also from this process because many problems of our society will get addressed. You will become more empathetic towards grassroots innovators. When you are in position of responsibility, maybe you will not close the door on them. In fact, invite them and help your students and your juniors and your colleagues to work with them so that informal and formal sector of our country benefits. Some of you might have seen the news a few days back. We have signed we have had an understanding with IIT Delhi Honeybee Network where we were trying to help that each student of IIT, 1,200 students they admit every year, will identify a problem from their native region as we just suggested to you today. Same idea was given to them. And they have institutionalized it and they have even allocated some funds to the students. But there is no restriction of time. They can do that in four years of their stay in the 
in the IIT Delhi campus. And what uh, Professor Ram Gopal Rao wrote in response to one of the questions that, look, earlier people took pride that our, ch our child has gone to IIT Delhi or IIT, another one. But now they will take pride that not only that he has gone to IIT, but he has also solved one of our unmet, unaddressed problem of our region or our community. That's the pride that they will have in the future. And I see that as a very, very positive development. So all of you, I'm sure, will carry some empathy for the innovators. Pradeep Samant, you are all volunteers of Honeybee Network now. Send a mail, anamika at yarn.org, anamika at yarn.org, or anamika, I don't know whether she has it, honeybee network.org, but anyway, this address you can send. And uh, she edits, she's an associate editor of the Honeybee Newsletter also, in which you can contribute your papers, uh, your uh, ideas that may not go in a formal journal, but where you have looked at people's knowledge and have added value to that, we'll be happy to consider it for publication. We'll be happy to give voice, visibility, and velocity to your ideas about societal needs, which you have either addressed already or you may address in future. We like to give visibility to your work so that more and more people in the world come to know how our young students are solving the problem. So thank you so much. God bless you. Stay engaged and do form your groups. We are circulating the list of the students, email, discipline, form groups, and uh, I'm sure you will be able to. Uh, address some of the problem that we have not addressed so far. Even if you define the problem, as I said earlier, that will be a great contribution because your juniors then will help in solving them. Thank you so much. Good luck. All the best. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Bye-bye. Yes, somebody had raised that? No, no.